Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Hope everyone's doing good. So as a qualified personal trainer and an online coach, I think I know a thing or two about how to build a juicy peach. And that is the point in today's video for me to help you achieve that. So this workout is essentially how I personally train. I would say it's quite an advanced workout. I don't stick to this specific workout plan every single time I train glutes. I keep the compound exercise at the start the same and then I kind of switch up the rest of the exercises depending on like how much time I have, how strong I'm feeling, what mood I'm in. But this is my go-to structure for a glutes workout. And if I could go back in time, six, seven years ago when I first started working out to young me, I would give her this workout plan because it's just been the most effective for me. Don't feel pressured to jump straight into this if you're a beginner and you're looking for some advice. This is gonna be quite full on, this is gonna be quite a lot. But you can always regress the workout by doing it body weight or using less weights, taking out some of the exercises until you feel confident to use all of them. Because trust me, it took me a lot of years to build up to being able to do this kind of routine using these weights. So yeah, with that being said, come to the gym with me. Today's a good day because it's glutes day. I've picked like a really awkward time Time to go to the gym it's like 4 p.m. right now so it's kind of just before the after work rush it's also like right in between lunchtime and dinner time so I'm kind of a bit peckish and considering that today's video is about how to structure the perfect glute workout I thought I would show you guys the perfect snack to have before a session if you're hungry and you're craving something this is only something that I've started doing recently to be honest with you and I have TikTok to thank for this these are just some little rice crackers and I have banana honey and peanut butter on them they have good carbs not too many carbs just the right amount and also i didn't realize that you're not actually supposed to really eat too much protein before a workout because it can be quite hard to digest so you want carbs because carbs are going to give you the energy and a banana is also really good for you it has carbs in it too but it also has like really good electrolytes not to mention it tastes really good i don't know if i said there's peanut butter on there too but yeah i'm just gonna snack on these um while i drive to the gym it's about like a 10 minute drive away can't forget to take the gym girl crack this was the um raise pre-workout by protein works i believe it's like the watermelon flavor i want to say and this just hits the spot this gives me i know i was talking about them rice cakes giving me the energy but they're not touching the energy that this gives me i'm a bit of a cracker when it comes to pre-workouts <laughs> especially when i lift heavy like i don't take pre-workout every single time that i train but i would say maybe like two or three sessions out of the week but yeah, I'm all prepped for my workout now. So I'm gonna take you guys into the gym with me. Um, the rest of the video is gonna be a voiceover because the music is way too loud in my gym. But yeah, I'm super excited to train and I hope you guys like this video. So of course we're starting out with a warm up and I'm on the Stairmaster today. Please ignore the backlit lighting. I was just trying to do the best I could with what I got and this was the outcome. Anyways, I am quite a stiff babe, like, I need to do a lot of warming up and stretching to really open up my muscles. So I really like to do a lower body focused cardio machine when I train my glutes. So Stairmaster is ideal. If not, I'll do the bike or maybe even a high incline walk. So I do about 10 minutes on a moderate speed. It definitely has me building up a sweat. If you guys have a Stairmaster at your gym before and you've used it, then you know that it's not easy, but I feel like it kind of gives me the adrenaline that I need to go in and train and lift heavy weights. And I'm sure you guys know what the benefits of doing a warm up are, and I'm not gonna bore you and go into it too much, but essentially you're just pumping blood around your body, getting the heart racing, and warming your muscles up to prevent any risk of injury during your session. Now, clearly, I'm extra because I do two warm-ups. I also do some dynamic stretches as part of my warm-up and these are essential because they target more specifically the muscle that you're looking to train and they also help improve flexibility. And like I said, for someone who's stiff, this helps massively with lifting weights. People underestimate how important it is to be strong and flexible because I definitely notice the difference in my lifting when I have a good warm-up. So yeah, I have got some hip openers, some leg swings, and, and some lateral lunges. And these lateral lunges hit the spot. Like my inside, my hips, 
The inside of my hips, that is where I struggle the most with flexibility. And trust me, these will have you feeling it. Now we can finally start the actual workout. So like I said at the beginning, I keep my compound lifts the same at the start of my session. So a compound exercise is essentially an exercise that focuses on training more than one muscle group. And they're typically like heavy lifting exercises. So things like squats, deadlifts, hip thrusts, stuff like that. So I always start my session out with hip thrusts. The reason I put these first is because I lift heavy when it comes to this exercise and I want to have all of the energy that I possibly can. If I was to put hip thrust at the end of my session after doing like five exercises before that, I would be way too exhausted and I never would be able to get the PBs that I usually get. So if you can, I know sometimes it's not possible when the gym's busy and stuff, try to put your heavy lifting exercises as close to the start of your workout as possible. The way I like to train when it comes to hip thrusts is in a pyramid set. So if you don't know what that is or you've never heard of the term before, it's basically where as the weight increases, the reps decrease. So it kind of like looks like a pyramid motion because you'll have like more reps, less weight, more weight, less reps. <laughs> I'm literally confusing myself here, so I'm not surprised if you guys are confused. Basically, the first set should have the most reps at the lightest weight, and then the top set should be having the least reps with the heaviest weight. Does that make sense? I think it does. So I do about five sets of hip thrusts. Um, I don't do five sets of everything throughout my sessions. It's only for like the first two compound exercises that I would do that number of sets. So I think I started with 70 kg for my warm up and 12 reps. And then I got up to 190, which is a new PB for me guys, at six reps. I'm aiming for eight. But yeah, this is one of my favorite exercises to do. I feel like I owe all of my glute gains to this exercise. Hip thrusts are a staple. If you're not doing them in your routine, please add them in. And the same can be said for the next exercise I'm about to talk about. So RDLs or Romanian deadlifts is another compound exercise because it works your hamstring muscles as well as your glutes as well as your back muscles, kind of just one of those full body snatches. The form of RDLs can be quite difficult to grasp, especially if you're a beginner. So my main top tips are just to always maintain a good posture throughout, so like a proud chest, straight back, and then you're kind of hinging at the hips as if you're closing a door using your glutes. And if you practice mind to muscle connection when you train, I always try and focus that movement specifically on my glutes. Of course, you're gonna be working your hamstrings as well, just because those muscles are involved in the movement, but if you want the ultimate glute gains then really try and focus all of your energy on using your glutes to hinge up and down. Now that the compound exercises are out of the way we're going to move on to another really important piece of your glute workout that I wasn't doing too much of when I first started training and that is single leg exercises. There's so many benefits to doing single leg exercises such as it improves your balance, it improves your overall strength and it can also help with any muscle imbalances if you have one leg that is like noticeably stronger than the other it kind of helps even that out and to be honest there are so many single leg exercises that you can choose from when it comes to training glutes but the ones that I decided to choose today were single leg deadlifts and single leg press and these are things that I would typically switch up just to kind of keep my workouts exciting so I don't always do these exact ones every time that I train but recently I've been loving single leg deadlifts so this movement is basically lowering your arm to the floor as you kick your leg back and people argue People go in on which side you should be holding the weight on as you kick your leg back. Personally, I hold the weight in the same hand that my leg kicks back on. That's just how I was taught to do it. It's also the way that I find the most comfortable. So, buy me in the comments if you disagree or educate me if I'm completely wrong. That's just how I do it. I also, embarrassingly, I haven't really mastered being able to do these too well without holding onto something for support. A lot of people that I see doing them just do it freestanding but I find it really hard to balance on one flat foot for some reason. I think I have quite a high arch in my foot, so balance is not really my thing. I'm working up to be able to do it without support. I can when I've got lightweight, but not with this bad boy. So when it comes to these single leg exercises and the rest of the workout, to be honest, I do three sets of all of these exercises. So not the four or five that I was doing for the first two. And reps wise, I think I did around 10 per leg, but anything between eight to 12 reps is a good rep range for muscle growth. Moving on to the second single leg exercise is a single leg press. This is one of my favorites. I have always had this in a part of my workout routine, but I actually, funny enough, would only do it for leg days. 
So I do quad focus single leg press. And the difference between making it more glute focused is you wanna have your foot higher up on the board that you're pressing off of because that will engage more of your glutes and hamstrings. And again, using mind to muscle connection to really focus that movement on the specific muscle that you wanna work helps massively as well. So yeah, same as before, I think I did three sets and 10 reps per leg. And by this point, I was pretty much dying. Um, I still had a few more exercises that I wanted to complete though. Next up, we have some dumbbell sumo squats. And I like to do these elevated just because I feel like you can probably see in the video, as I squat down, I kind of lower the weight a bit lower than ground level if the ground was there and I feel like having it elevated just allows me to get a bit deeper into that squat so you can obviously do these without the elevation but this is just like my preference. Sumo squats are a more wide stance squat so you want to have your feet wider than shoulder width you also want to point your toes outwards slightly to engage the glutes more and just make sure you're squatting down low and yeah safe to say that exercise was a killer. Moving on to the last exercise that I did of today's session I finished off of the good old abduction machine. I love this machine. I think it's a staple. I always feel the burn in my glutes when I use this machine and I basically finished off with some volume. So I did a high rep count on this exercise. I think I did three sets of 20 reps. So I used like a bit of a lower weight than what I usually would be able to do. But I kind of just wanted to finish off the workout with feeling a burn. 20 reps is a good number to work out. You can also do it to failure. So basically just keep on going until you physically can't anymore. But yeah, that is the end of the workout. That is how Ames Gaines trains glutes, guys. I'll let the secret out. You all know what my routine is like. And of course, I had to finish off with some stretching because nobody wants a tight ass. I don't know how many times I have to say it. But if you're watching this and you're a beginner, please don't neglect the stretching. Like another thing that I would say to myself from years ago, stretching is key. It helps you lift heavier. It's also just so much better for your overall health. Like you can't be lifting heavy ass weights like this multiple times a week and not relieving your muscles afterwards. The best way to end the perfect glute workout is to end it with a shake. I feel like my sessions are not complete unless I finish it off with a protein shake. And the simple science behind taking protein shakes is basically when you train, your muscles kind of tear apart and then regenerate in order to grow and gain in size and become bigger. So when you feed them more protein, they're able to repair themselves more quickly and grow more quickly. I feel like it allows the pump to last longer as well and this is of course my protein work shake this is the vegan wonder shake i swear by this it doesn't make me blow it doesn't make me gassy it tastes really good such a good consistency and i actually enjoy drinking it which is something that is hard to find when it comes to protein shakes i'll leave like all of my links and codes down below but yeah i feel like supplements aren't a must but for me personally i swear by all the supplements that i use and i feel like it just makes my session so much better and that is the end of the video you guys i genuinely had so much fun and filming this video because this is what I love to do and if doing what I love to do and showing you guys helps one of you build a peach then I'm doing something right with my life. Hopefully everything I said made sense. If you have any questions about anything that maybe I didn't explain clearly enough feel free to ask down below and yeah let me know if you want to see any more of these workout routine videos because I haven't really done too many of them on YouTube so far. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!